I picked most of the stuff I'm going to be sharing from the Institute for Population and Social Security Research. The, there's a good case there for Japan on its program for caring for the elderly. It would help us set a sort of a model for ourselves and gauge what we have on the ideal. So, the first time the Japanese got engaged in this matter of seriously thinking about the social welfare for the elderly was in 1963. And uh, the welfare for the elderly before 1963 had been mainly for accommodating the frail elderly persons in sort of asylum under a public assistance system. When a formal law called the Social Welfare for the Elderly Act was passed in 1963, it sought to maintain the physical and mental health of the elderly. Before that, it had been, we have the elderly gathered in one place, and then the public contributes to their eating or their sleeping and whatever. But the act then moved it a step higher. And this is 1963, almost as old as Kenya. They moved the level higher to make sure they target specifically mental health and the physical health of the elderly and to figure out how to stabilize their livelihoods and the various welfare services of the elderly, including intensive care homes, the home health services, all of those were developed around this time. Then the question of free health care for those who were 70 years and over was introduced 10 years after that. So in 1973, there was an introduction of free health care for anyone who was 70 years and above. Healthcare expenditure for the elderly increased and therefore the financial burden on the government also increased. In 1982, the Japanese passed what was called the Health and Medical Service Act. And they started to impose a method of co-payment for health care on the elderly, meaning they began demanding that the elderly participate in the paying of these costs. Remember, Japanese were not having many children. They have a huge aging population and there are very few young people. So when you have fewer people to tax and many elderly to look after, policy needs to begin changing. And at that time, they began asking the older people to start contributing to their health care. This same act of 1980 to emphasize the importance of health promotion from the middle aged of over 40 years, meaning to prevent, uh, to prevent the situation of increased disease burden in old age, let's make sure that the 40 year olds are living a life that will not make their old age complicated. So around that same time, more people were getting aware of the problem of social 
hospitalization and the bedridden elderly, which meant that the elderly tended to be hospitalized even after their conditions no longer needed Medicare. And this is partly because long-term care facilities and services were not enough. And the co-payment of these facilities was increasingly more expensive than that of the hospitals. So people would say, if my grandfather has a, a sickness, it is cheaper to keep them in hospital than to an old people's home. Okay, that's what was taking place at that point in time. And this is the 80s. So anyway, this kind of situation was solved by a policy by the ministry concerned in 1989. And it was called the 10-year strategy for the promotion of health and welfare for the elderly. So this policy would promote an urgent development of care facilities and in-home services. Okay, so increase the care facilities and the in-home services, meaning people who are trained to visit or to go and work with the elderly in their home setup without moving them to a separate home. So, as we say, this 10-year policy that was instituted in 1989 was revised at the, in the, at the beginning of the 90s. Again, to invest in the health and welfare of the elderly. And what this 1990s document did was to enhance home-based care, leading to the argument uh, of new long-term care systems uh, for the elderly. Come the year 2000, the Japanese introduced what they called the long-term care insurance. And this was a social insurance system that would cover the long-term care of the elderly. So when you're planning the NSSF monies that you're putting aside, or NHIF monies you're putting aside, they would then have to factor in that the kind of care that old people would need in old age. So the social insurance system uh, covered the long-term care for the elderly, which before this time, before 2000, had provided partly through the health insurance system and partly through the welfare measures for the elderly that were ad hoc, first public system, then into homes, then co-payment, then co-payment required that look here, no, it's becoming untenable, people are keeping their parents in hospitals other than in the uh, home care systems. Then the plan for, for care for the elderly, the gold plan uh, was started in the 90s, I mean the 80s, 89, and revised in, uh, in the early 90s. So then this long-term care insurance grew out of the recognition that due to changes in the society, such as weakened community ties, meaning children are no longer connected to their parents because they have to work day in, day out, they even forget where home is due to increase in small sized families people are no longer having as many children as before and increase of working women financial and psychological burden of the family facing the care of the elderly had become unbearably high so i hope good people you realize that these young girls who didn't go so far in school that we keep in the villages to look after our parents 
are actually doing a great job. It would be interesting to see how the state of Kenya would figure out how to put house helps to real use and guarantee employment in the care for the elderly. Anyway, so the long-term care was recognizing these challenges that the care for the elderly actually had become unbearably high. It is also the case that there was a limit of service provision under the existing health and welfare system because of the increasing number of elderly that required long-term care. And by the way, Japanese live long. Their lifestyle, what they eat, their discipline, they have a tendency of living long. So if they're not having children, chances are you will have very many old people who are not dying. <laughs> anyway, the long-term care insurance was then designed to share the burden of caring for the elderly among all the members of society. So we'll talk a little bit about this long-term care insurance system. And what is this principle? In principle, the principle of long-term care insurance as a system is that, anyway, there are three basic principles for the long-term care insurance. Support for independence, user-oriented system, and social insurance. Support for independence, user-oriented system, and social insurance. In the first place, this long-term care insurance system does not intend to supply, I mean, to simply provide personal care to the elderly who need long-term care. But it emphasizes supporting the independence of the elderly. Second, service users can receive comprehensive health, medical and welfare services from diverse agents based on their own choices. So you're remaining home, you know you have your challenge, but what you do, you have this repertoire of agents who you would source uh, to come and provide services to you. Thirdly, those who are 40 years and over are compulsorily insured. Thirdly, those who are 40 years and over are compulsorily insured. And thereby the relationships between benefits and contributions are made very clear. So as soon as you hit age 40, we start making deductions from your salary towards long-term care. And this will reduce the stigma of social welfare. If I contributed to my long-term insurance, then my being on welfare in all age is not a stigmatized uh, happening. Okay. Is the principle intelligible so far? And would it be applicable in our country? Aza, ninya muna maguka na bababu muna chunga. Hmm? We have. 
How are you handling your grandparents? How many your fathers are looking after them? <laughs> In the village. Hmm? The village takes care of them. With <laughs> no. Hmm? No. No. Yeah. In Africa, the social system usually is designed to be able to cover that ground. There is always that sister who we don't value a lot, but is available to look after our parents. There's always that brother who we don't value a lot, but is in the village and able to stay with the parents. It would seem that the elderly in Africa probably are taken for granted. The state has not yet seen the need to invest in them. Anyway, so since it is a long-term care insurance system, we need to talk about the insurer, the insured, the service provision, and where does the money come from? Okay, how are the care needs assessed? How is care managed? And possibly the remuneration for the services. So we'll begin with the insurer. Now in Japan, municipalities and special wards, see, local government, are the insurers. So the local government is the what? Is the insurer. Sure. Because they have been engaged in health and welfare services for the elderly. Usually, local governments are the ones in charge of looking after the elderly in their territory. So when I hear a county governor who has no plan for the elderly, I laugh. So in this case, these municipalities and special wards would be expected to deliver services in harmony with community values. The care available and deserving of an elderly person in one part of the country might differ from that of another part of the country. So that's why riding on the local governments to be the insurers was deemed necessary. Then the insurers would work collaboratively with the national government, the medical insurance companies, the pension insurers, and take the role of the following. This collaboration would say we would know who would collect the insurance premiums, who would manage the fund, <clears throat> who would assess the care needs, and who would pay remuneration to the service providers. So for the sake of the fiscal or financial stability and administrative efficiency, some of the smaller local government units would organize themselves into an extended association as a regional insurer. Okay, so it would hit the Higa to join uh, which other small county? Kakamega is big. And then this, uh, they put together to sort of operate as a region. Or oh, you'd find that uh, the Higa, Kakamega, 
and uh, Kisumu probably do not have enough of numbers of employees to be deducted monies from. So then they grow their number bigger by looping in CIA, looping in Homade to increase the numbers. Then who are the insured persons? The insured persons are those who are aged 65 years and over. And we call those category one. And the subscribers of health insurance whose age is between 40 and 64 years old are called secondary insured persons which is category two. So as soon as you hit age 40, you join category two. When you hit 65, you join category one. At one point in time, Japan had over 30 million people subscribed in category one. Now, 30 million people over 65. In Kenya, what portion of the population would that be? We are 44 or 45. How many millions are we? 50. We are? We are 50. 50. Yes. <laughs> you people. <laughs> Kenya to make figure 50? Yes, the current census. <laughs> mm -hmm. I doubt that. But anyway. Uh, yeah. So if, if you had 30, this is more than half, eh? Yes. That is huge. And they are all over 65. Essentially, they're supposed to be all retired. The remaining would be how many million people? Could be around 20 million people. And probably 10 million would be the ones working to pay taxes. And 10 would be the children. All of them dependent. So these 10 million people who are paying taxes would have to look after the 40 million. Up to five years ago, Japan had close to 45 million in category two. So they had 30 million in category one, 45 million in category two. The premium is usually collected through the municipality and is, it is deducted from the pensions of category one. So those in category one are the ones who are paying the monies monthly necessary to maintain uh, yeah the premiums are deducted from category one pensions eh? then through additional premium is paid to the health insurance for category two. So the premium amount of the category one is determined by each municipality, meaning how much money to be deducted from your pension scheme is determined by each municipality. And therefore, it would differ from one local government to another. The premium, meaning the deductions that will be taken from you for your long-term insurance, is income-related. And there are usually measures to moderate 
the burden for low income persons. Now, those eligible to receive long term care are all persons in category one who are certified as requiring support who are certified as requiring support or long-term care by certification committee. Meanwhile, with regard to category two persons, care is limited to those requiring long-term care or support due to age-related diseases. Usually dementia or cerebrovascular disorders. Usually dementia or cerebrovascular disorders. So we've talked about the insurers and the insured. Now we talk about service provision. Now the services provided by the long-term care insurance are mainly divided into two categories. Preventive services and care services. Preventive services are provided for those who are certified as support level one and two, and care services are for those certified as care level one to five. The types of preventive services include home visit care, outpatient rehabilitation service, short-term stay at a care facility, types of care services would include in-home services such as home health service and daycare, and facility services such as intensive care home, long-term care health facilities, and the type that looks like sanatoriums, but also community-based services such as home visits at night, Take care for dementia patients and small sized multifunctional in home care. So these guys have a whole multifaceted set of services available to the elderly and financed by the long term insurance long-term care insurance system. Now, according to the level of care needs, users can choose the type of services and the providers, either publicly or privately managed. As you can see, there is a lot of money there to be spent. We have to talk about the source of financing. So the cost incurred in the long-term care insurance is financed by premiums, public expenditure, and the co-payment of users. Apart from the co-payment of the users, 
the cost is financed 50% by premiums, 21% by category one, and 29% by category two. Okay, so 50% from category one and two, and 50% from premiums. But also 50% by public expenditure for in-home services, 25% by national treasury, 12% by the local governments. Actual local governments is like 20, uh, 26% by the local governments. So you then realize that, I think keeps jumping off, CG. Now, the premium for category one, which is these over 65 year olds, is charged based on total income of the insured and reviewed once every three years. As at five years ago, it was around 2,900 yen per month. That's the premium, the amount of money that they were paying into the long-term insurance from their patients. We total to around 2,900 yen. That's a lot of money. Now, for category two, the insured rate is usually 55% of the salary and annual bonus if it is the Japanese Health Insurance Association. As a physical support to the local governments, There is a foundation called the Fiscal Stability Foundation, which is usually financed from the National Treasury. It gives a temporary loan or grant when the insurance budget gets a deficit especially in the event of having more than the expected service demand. So generally that's how the Japanese are fortified the funding for the care of the elder. We then move to assessment of the care needs. Now, the users are classified into up to seven categories, depending. Forgive me, someone is distracting our call depending on the severity of the care needed. The limit of services provided is determined according to these various categories. The user must be assessed by the municipality into one of the categories before applying 
for the services. For instance, if a person faces a condition that requires support or care, the person or a family member must first submit an application for a long-term care requirement certification to the local government. When the local government receives this application, it sends an investigator to visit the applicant's home for an interview on the physical, mental state, and the aspects of daily life. The interview results are then analyzed based on a computer system so that a preliminary assessment is generated. Then an assessment is made, a primary physician gives an opinion, and then these are examined by the certification committee of long-term care needs, which comprises of health, medical, and welfare experts. So as development study students, I hope that this is helping you understand the kind of framework you ought to be proposing to the county systems if ever you are given the responsibility to think about the question of the elderly. So the certification committee conducts a secondary assessment and it decides the required care or support level. Okay, so generally that's how the assessment of needs is done. We then reflect on care management. So once the care or support level is decided, a personal care plan is created, which combines uh, packages of care and support within the limit of services for each category. The creator of the care plan varies depending on category. The care plan, for example, for those eligible to receive care services and requiring care between the levels of one and five are usually created by the long care support specialists who are care managers at the in-home uh, long-term care support businesses or care facilities. But if it is care plans for those eligible to receive preventive services and requiring support level one to two, these are created at the integrated community support centers. And we need to take note, the integrated community care support is a scheme created in line with the emphasis on the preventive services when the law was revised in 2005. It serves as a center for elderly care and it is responsible for care management uh, to prevent long-term care, creating care plans, for the preventive long-term services, providing consultations to the elderly and their family, protecting the elderly rights and the elderly, the early detection of abuse. 
This community bit would really be interesting in our context. Since we already have some sort of uh, family-based, community-based handling of elders, it would seem that it's possible to operate a community-based care for elders without too much investment in terms of money for our country. How then are people remunerated? Remuneration for services. When long-term care providers deliver preventive or long-term care services, when long-term care providers deliver preventive or long-term care services for recipients, they receive remuneration for services based on the official price list of the long-term care benefit expense, which is usually decided by the Minister of Health, Labor, and Welfare according to a recommendation from the Social Security Council. So there is a Social Security Council which looks at the price index and then advises, then advises the Minister of Health, Labor and Social Welfare on the kind of remuneration that the service providers to the elderly could receive for the services they render. Now the price list consists of in-home in long-term care or preventive services and facility services. And this is revised every three years. 90% of the price is paid to a provider through the local government health insurance organization. And 90% of the recipients, I mean, a 90 I mean, a 10% is paid by the recipients through a co-payment method. Okay. Do we really have a problem of the elder in this country? Or oh, Lizzie Vitun is our Japan too? Mm -hmm. They're there. Hmm? They're there. So what do we do now? Are these very ambitious plans that the Japanese have? <laughs> Leslie, are you looking after an old person? Yeah, my grandfather. Hmm? Ako kwako kwa nyumba hapa Nairobi ama kwa ushago? Ako ushago. Uli mutupia nani? Ako na houseboy. Okay. Yes. So you remunerate the houseboy to look after them? And they do yes. other things around the house? Yes. Okay. But I visit time to time. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, how many children are you planning to have? Who? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Me. So that we know whether you will have someone to look after you or <laughs> we need to start to do advocacy to make sure the state can uh, pay whoever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so that's what is going to happen to us, I'm telling you. Our generation, we are many years, but 20, 30 years down the road, when we are starting to age, many of us, the families we have are smaller, there will be fewer people. We'll be in the Japanese situation in another 30 years. Mm. Okay. We now need to move on to what we would call the current issues or challenges associated with this Japanese project. I have a question. Yes, please. Before you continue, you say the care management, about care management. Yes. Once it's decided, the personal care plan is created. It combines what and what? The, okay, the creator of the care plan varies, eh? mm -hmm. depending on the category. So the care plans for, the, uh, for those eligible to receive care services and requiring care level one to five is intensive eh? mm -hmm. and they are created by the long-term care support specialists who are usually care managers okay. are in home long-term care support businesses so they're usually private enterprises which mm -hmm. do in home long-term care support these are the ones who do the assessment. All it would be right. the care facilities, assuming it is an elderly people's home where this person is. Okay. Yeah. You can continue. Okay. So now, um, yeah. The first issue is the financial strain that was placed on the government and the necessary reforms usually. When things become costly, everyone wants to do reform. Soon after the enactment of the policy, it became evident that the initial financial arrangement was not enough to meet the cost for long-term care. The number of persons certified for long-term care increased by more than 140%. From 2000, from the year 2000 to 20, from the year 2000 to 2019, they increased from 2 million new certifications to up to 6 million new certifications. The number of care recipients also grew from 1.5 million in September 2000 to close to 5 million. And these are people who were in facilities in home care. So generally the financial outlay just grew steadily to trillions of shillings. So that is one of the largest challenges that uh, they faced. So in that circumstance, the long-term care insurance was reviewed and several reforms were instituted.
and the reforms were aimed at constructing an integrated community care system that would provide a seamless support comprised of healthcare, long-term care, prevention, housing, and life livelihood support services, and also targeted to achieving sustainability of the system with a balanced relationship between contributions and benefits. I don't know if you realize that the Japanese elderly people, even when they retire, they are considered as still earning by virtue of the pensions that come to them every month. So it is from these pensions that monies are deducted. So when you're buying used Japanese cars, you are financing the Japanese economy and helping them look after their old people. You see that? So there's another act that was implemented in the year 2012, again targeted at revising the long-term care insurance. And it was targeting at several things. One, it was targeting at enhancing collaboration between health and long-term care. Two, securing human resources for long-term care and improving quality services, meaning guaranteeing that we have enough human resource that will deal with long-term care. Three, improving housing for the elderly. So 2012, we have an act that is implemented to revise all these things. Four, this act would promote measures to support people with dementia. So dementia is a real challenge for elderly people. Five, enhancing functions of insurers and promoting their autonomy. And six, this act would target mitigating increase of insurance premium, meaning placing provisions in there that would prevent or keep the premiums down. Okay. The other issue, apart from the financial strain and the necessary reforms, is establishment of an integrated community care system. The long-term care insurance system initially aimed to support the independent living of the elderly. Initially, this long-term care insurance system aimed to support the independent living of the elderly. And even if the elderly entered a state that required long-term care, the insurance system aimed to develop an environment where the elderly could receive treatment in the community with which they were familiar. To this end, the law established community care-based services and the integrated community care. 
כן? The target, however, was not achieved easily because many issues remained unresolved. For example, the elderly persons having to enter a care facility, even if they requested for in-home care, due to the known availability of proper service providers in the familiar community. All the young people are out working, they're spending several hours at the job, even though you would have wished to have a community care system where the elderly person is attended to by people he is familiar with, they are not there. They have all gone to work and spending long hours at the workplace. So what then do you have to do? You might have to take this elderly person into a care facility just because the service providers within the community are not necessarily available. The other challenge is the lack of collaboration between medical institutions, care facilities, and in-home service providers. And the insufficient number of elderly friendly housing. So the houses that can accommodate old people are few. You still have people to go upstairs or to get into lifts and all the disturbance that comes along with that. So the integrated care community can be defined as a community-based system, a community-based system that can appropriately provide various support services, including health care, long-term care, prevention, housing, and livelihood support within daily living spheres so as to ensure safety, security, and health of the people. Now, the area of community is generally regarded as that accessible within 30 minutes, which are almost as large as sort of the territories like 30 minutes. Would that be a ward in our area? Can you move from one end of the ward to the center in 30 minutes? No. Hmm? So the wards are very big in this place. Hmm? Can you cross a ward in 30 minutes? So to establish this community care system, The Japanese set up the following five aspects of action. One, enhancing collaboration with medical facilities. Two, improving and enhancing capacity and flexibility of the long-term care services. Three, Excuse me, could you yes. repeat to because some at some point you're breaking. I don't know if I'm yeah. the only one. I told you my I'm using my phone as a hotspot. So fluctuation yes. is okay. Yes, one is enhancing collaboration with medical.
facilities. Uh, two is uh, improving and enhancing capacity and flexibility of long-term care services. Improving and enhancing capacity and flexibility of long-term care services. Three is promoting prevention, meaning how do you prevent dementia? How do you prevent these cerebral vascular issues? You know, how do you keep people healthy? Four is ensuring advocacy and livelihood support services. Ensuring advocacy and livelihood support services, such as meals provision, all housework assistance. And five, constructing and improving elderly friendly housing. Now it should be noted that the central and local governments are involved in coordinating all these related programs. To realize people living in the familiar community independently as long as possible. So the strategy is to make sure that we leave people, the elderly, live an independent life, meaning they're living their own houses for as long as possible with support of the community. That is one way of bringing down the cost of uh, maintaining the elderly allow them to live an independent life. Give them the support they need to live an independent life. So that they don't have to be taken to a care center or having to, to hire in-home services. Then the idea of securing human resources of long-term care. The number of care workers has increased. The number of care workers has increased since the introduction of the long-term care insurance system. And it reached approximately 1.3 million workers in the 2011-2012 financial year. Although the number has grown, long-term care providers always suffer shortages of the long-term care human resource since the demand for services is continuously increasing. If you had in a ward close to 100 service providers this year, chances are you will need 150 next year in the same ward because many people are becoming aged, many people are hitting 65, so there is always a shortage of long-term care providers. Now it is regarded as a big challenge to secure the necessary personnel and to improve their working environment. As usual, a majority of the workers are female in the long-term care services. But most of them have to work part-time 
especially for the in-home services. But in the elderly care facilities, most of the workers there are full-timers. So in the elderly care facilities, most of the workers are full-timers. So the ministry considered how to raise their wages and took several measures such as additional payments for the long-term care providers so as to improve their working conditions. And these providers can receive additional payments if they could meet the requisite improvement programs, including a pay raise plan. As we draw close to the end, we reflect on the welfare for the elderly other than the long-term care insurance. There is the question of housing for the elderly. There are several housing services for the elderly. Intensive care, home, group home for dementia persons, nursing home, moderate fee home, a fee-based home and elderly housing with care services. Intensive care home for the elderly is a daycare facility for persons aged 65 years and over, the intensive care home for elderly is a daycare facility for persons aged 65 years and over who require constant nursing care due to serious physical or mental disabilities. This service is usually provided by the long-term care insurance benefits. The group home for elderly with dementia the group home for elderly with dementia would be a small facility in which dementia parents, I mean patients, in which dementia patients would live together and receive care and support in a homely atmosphere under the long-term care insurance. The capacity of a group home is defined usually between five to nine persons. So the moderate fee 
homes. No, the nursing homes, sorry. The nursing homes for the elderly are admission type facilities for economically deprived elderly. And in addition to this, the moderate fee homes, which would also be referred to as care houses, provide residence and support services, provide residence and support services, including meal services at low costs. In recent years, we can say Japan has had an increase in fee-based homes for the elderly run by the private sector. And these are considered as housing facilities rather than social welfare facilities for the elderly. When the elderly enters a contract with a service provider of a fee-based home, they must pay the full expense by themselves, which sometimes causes financial travel between the provider and the resident. The in-home service provided by long-term care insurance can also be used at these facilities. So you pay a fee, move into this home care, and then you also order for the in-home services to find you there. So it is generally treated as elderly housing facility. Now these, yes. Now these elderly housing facilities that charge a fee have to be registered. And the criteria for registration is that one, the dwelling floor area should be 25 square meters or more per unit. And it should be barrier free design. Two, provision of services including safety, confirmation, and daily life consultation must be guaranteed. Three, extra conditions on contract to secure residence in case of long hospitalization. Okay, so that's the kind of engagement with regard to that care that comes at a fee for the elderly. The government of Japan took a decision to do a five-year plan for the support of people with dementia. And I think this took place in 2012. The policy document was called a future direction on dementia support. And in it was a strategic plan to support 
people with dementia. The plan, the plan aimed to create a society that respects dignity and makes people able to live in a familiar environment in the community as long as possible. And to achieve this, the ministry chose to pursue new programs that would change the conventional culture of care. New program paths for standard care for dementia were developed. Things like early diagnosis and treatment, appropriate health, and long-term care services, all these were put in place. There was also an attempt to prevent the abuse of the elderly. Preventing elderly abuse. Now, this came in with the law again in 2012, which defined that the elderly abuse includes abusive behavior by both family members and care workers. It specifies that local governments are primarily responsible for implementing abuse prevention programs. And also take the role of liaison and coordination amongst themselves for the collection of information and construction of safe facilities. The abuse prevention program emphasizes the following fundamental perspectives. One, seamless support, seamless support for prevention of abuse to recovery from abuse. Two, respect for the elderly person's own decision making. Respect for the elderly person's own decision making. Three, positive approaches to abuse prevention. Or elderly detection and protection. Five, support for the elderly and their caregivers. And finally, collaboration and cooperation of the related organizations. And that's all we had to share with regard to this Japanese experience. I had something from Norway, I had something from Finland, but the Japanese one impressed me a little more. So I thought we would share that and figure out whether it is something that we could dream at for our elderly people. 
And those of you who are involved in service as development studies people, you might realize that you might be able to develop a service for caring for the elderly. So that the money is that uh, Leslie and Winfred and whoever is sending down to the village are managed by you to look after their old people. Amma? Mm. Yeah. It sounds like it is something that can be done as a social enterprise. Because for sure there are quite a number of people who would wish to have their elderly people looked after. But the hassle of getting this houseboy who, has, who is not trained in looking after the elderly and uh, then you rush them on a bicycle and a boda boda to hospital, I don't know what, all those kind of things. It would seem that if uh, a team of middle class people pulled together resources to look after their people collectively who shall go, it could work. It could work. There are many things the insurance schemes cannot cover well, but with a properly developed program, even the insurance companies would buy in. Naswali. Okay, so I think we have earned our day. One and a half hours of engagement is good enough. Let's meet again next week. Kindly send us these slides if you can. Yes, you're going to have them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.